to welcome you back in our special study in relation with that other angel in Revelation chapter 18, part 2. But before going onward, I would like to invite you for a special prayer to ask the presence of the Lord. Gracious loving Father who art in heaven, we come unto you to thank you for the special privilege you had given to us to study thy holy words and help us to present it with clarity and power. And bless also the listener, especially those who are listening to this video, that they may be able to grasp the message and be benefited upon it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today we will be studying again the second part of that other angel of Revelation 18. In the past study, we knew that during the Jack Conference session of Minneapolis, that that other angel came down through the presentation of the message of Christ or righteousness through Elder Jones and Wagoner. There was a mixed feeling during that meeting. There were opposition party and another group who are presenting it, accepting it, and believing on it. And after the meeting, they went back home with two different opinions. Actually, after the Minneapolis meeting, the Seventh Adventist General Conference was trying to paint the general condition of the church with a rosy picture. They continued to present the nice story that the church had accepted the message of Christ and righteousness even until today. Let us see one of those uh, messages that they printed in their books, Story of Our Church, page 246. The coming of the fourth angel in 1888 marked the beginning of the work of reformation in the Seventh Adventist Church. The message brought to the church by elders Wigoner and Jones set up an important landmark in the history of the church. It marked the beginning of the great reform. So dito po makikita natin they accepted that the message of Jones and Wagoner was the beginning of the Great Reformation inside the Seventh Adventist Church. Another paragraph of this book, Story of Our Church 246, says like this. After the 1888 conference, unity gradually came. Letters who had opposed the movement toward a deeper more personal faith accepted reproof from Mrs. White and confessed their unhappy condition of mind after the conference. So dito makikita natin na ang Jack Conference ng Seventh Adventist nagsabi na karamihan sa mga opositor ay nagkanfisal, they repented, especially when Sister Ellen G. White reproved, reproved them and they accepted the reproof. And 
they confess their unhappy condition of mind during that conference. Another statement we can read, story of our church 246. Through, though the Minneapolis conference seemed depressing and alarming, it turned out to be a great victory for the church. A new experience came to the leaders, and the church made rapid progress in all branches of the work at home and abroad, as there was a realization of the proper emphasis which must be given to righteousness by faith. Ito po ang malaking uh, sinasabi ng mga kapatid nating mga Adventista na look, after Minneapolis meeting, we were blessed by the Lord tremendously. Tingnan mo yung mga buildings namin, mga eskulahan, mga universities, mga hospitals and sanitariums. They were sprouting like mushrooms. So God really blessed us because we accepted the message of Christ our righteousness. And even there was a confession of one of the oppositors. And he was Uriah Smith. Let us read the confession of Uriah Smith, letter 32, 1891. Yesterday, Wednesday, the meeting was held in my room in the office. Uh, in the office, an elder Smith read the letter I had sent him. I read it to them all and said he accepted it as from God. He went back home to Minneapolis meeting and made a confession of the spirit he had occupied, casting on me very heavy burdens. Brother Rupert confessed also, and we had a very profitable, excellent meeting. Brother Smith had, has fallen on the rock and is broken. Ito po testigo or testimony in Sister Ellen J. White na after the Minneapolis meeting, Uriah Smith really repented and accepted his mistakes. Totoo nga, merong nag-repent. Pero ano ba talaga ang reality after the meeting of Minneapolis? Tingnan natin ang mga uh, writings ni Sister Ellen G. White. Special Testimony Series A, number 6, page 19, paragraph 26. Those who opened the door of their hearts to temptation at Minneapolis and carry the same spirit home with them will realize, if not now, in the near future, that they resisted the Holy Spirit of God and they despite to the Spirit of grace. Ibig sabihin, hindi lahat ang nag-repent. Marami din sa kanila mga leaders, even leadership, of the general conference of the 70 Adventist Church did not repent. This the Minister 78 to 80, 1895. Men who are entrusted with weighty responsibilities, but who have no living connection with God, had been and are doing despite to His Holy Spirit, they are indulging the very same spirit as did Korah, Dathan, and Abiram and as did the Jews in the days of Christ. Ang continuation po dito, they began the satanic work at Minneapolis, yet these men had been holding position of trust and had been molding the work after their own similitude. Kaya dito po sinasabi ni Sister Ellen G. White na after the meeting of Minneapolis, many leaders did not repent. Nung umuwi sila, daladala nila yung espiritu ng opposition. At ang masaklap na nangyari, sila po'y nagiging uh, nagkakaroon ng espiritu ng rebellion tulad po ni Kura, Datan, and Abiram sa doktrina po ng righteousness by faith. At saka ang kanilang uh, prinsipyo o kanilang opinion, they place their mold especially in the center of the work. Kasi sila po yung mga leaders ng church. At ano po nangyari? 
Special Testimonies, The Work at Battle Creek, May 31, 1896. Let us read. To a large degree, the JAR Conference Association has lost its sacred character because some connected with it have not changed their sentiments in any particular since the conference held at Minneapolis. Some in responsible, responsible positions go on proudly in the way of their own hearts. Ready to makikita natin na may mga leaders doon po sa JAR Conference since they arrived home from the conference of Minneapolis, nandoon pa rin yung espiritu ng opposition sa mensahe. Kaya po, ang nangyari po sa JAR Conference, it has lost its sacred character. At dahil dito, may sinasabi si Sister Ellen White, who can now feel sure that they are safe in respecting the voice of the Jack Conference Association? If the people in our church understood the management of the men who walk in the light of their sparks of their own kindling, would they respect their decisions? I answer, no, not for a moment. Kaya po, peligro yung mga Pangulo po na nagkaroon ng sparks their own, with their own kindling ay ito po ang nangyari na naapektuhan po ang great center of the work which is the General Conference. Testimonies to Ministers 359 At the center of the work, matters are being shaped so that every other institution is following in the same course. And the general conference is itself becoming corrupted with wrong sentiments and principles. In the working of plans, the same principles are manifest that had controlled matters at Battle Creek for quite a length of time. Alam po natin mga kapatid na ang prinsipyo na nagkaroon po ang Jack Conference many years ago is about legalism. Sila po ay nagtuturo na ang, kaso, ang kasaguan po ng Panginoon o kautosan po ng Panginoon ay pwedeng masunod natin sa pamamagitan ng ating sariling, ano po, sariling nating obedience. Ito po imposible. At hindi yan nagbago kahit nandoon na po ang mensahe sa Christ and Righteousness doon po sa Minneapolis. Itong mold na ito nagpatuloy hanggang na ang Jack Conference nagkaroon ng wrong sentiments and principles. At yun po ang rason na ang Jack Conference ay becoming corrupted with wrong sentiments and principles. Ngayon, ano po nangyari sa mga ministro at saka sa mga local churches Dahil ito po ang pinairal mula sa Jar Conference hanggang sa local church. Volume 5, Testimonies for the Church 79. What can I say to arouse our people? I tell you, not a few ministers who stand before the people to explain the scriptures are defiled. The hearts are corrupt, their hands unclean. The church is corrupt because her members who defile their bodies and pollute their souls. Dito po makikita natin mga kapatid na dahil po ang sitwasyon ng iglesia ay lukewarm, uh, hindi naman malamig, hindi naman mainit, kundi maligamgam kasi po ang pagtuturo ng mga leaders ay hindi po ayon sa kagustuhan ng Council of the True Witness. Dapat bibili sila ng gold dried in fire Pa, uh, para ang kanilang obedience must be prompted by faith that works by love. Kaya ngayon, ang iglesia po ay naipiktuhan. Ngayon, nung nagpatuloy ang sitwasyon na ito, may dalawang grupo sa loob ng simbahan. One rejected the message of Christ's righteousness, another one accepted. Gaano karami ang nagreject? Ayon po dito sa Testimonies for the Church, Volume 5, Page 10, 
Thank God, all will not be rocked to sleep in a cradle of carnal security. There will be faithful ones who will discern the signs of the times, while a large number professing present truth will deny their faith by their works. There will be some who will endure until the end. Ang present truth po, mga kaibigan, ay pong Christ our righteousness. It is the third angel's message in verity. Ay karamihan sa mga nagtitiwala nito were not sanctified by it. Kaya merong kukunti lang po ang sumusunod. So nahati ang iglesia into two parties. Faithful, faithful ones, little company, while a large class are denying their faith because they were not sanctified by keeping the present truth. But of course, there will be some who will endure until the end. Meron lang maliit mga kapatid na mag-endure. Saan po ngayon si Sister Ellen Jowat kung makampi? Pero hindi pa naghiwalay ha, nandoon pa sa loob. Pero may dalawang opinion uh, na naghati sa simbahan. Ayon po dito, sa Testimonies for the Church, Volume 5, page 136. To stand in defense of truth and righteousness when the majority forsake us, to fight the battles of the Lord when champions are few, this will be our test. Kaya dito, mga kapatid, si Sister White ay kumakampi doon po sa maliliit na grupo. Sabi po niya, ang mga champions ay kukunting, kukunti lang. Ito po ang ating proiba, sabi pa niya. At sa situation after Minneapolis meeting, tingnan natin kung ano ang diagnosis sa Council of the True Witness. Sabihin natin na sa si Panginoong Jesus, ano po ang diagnosis niya sa Bayang Adventista? Volume 8, Testimonies for the Church 250, Paragraph 2. Let us read. Who can truly say our gold is tried in the fire, our garments are unspotted by the world? I saw our instructor pointing to the garments of the so-called righteousness. Sino po itong instructor? Ito po ay si Panginoong Jesus. Stripping them off, he laid bare the defilement beneath. Then he said to me, can you not see how they have pretentiously covered up their defilement and rottenness of character? How is the faithful city become an harlot? My father's house is made a house of merchandise, a place whence the divine presence and glory have departed. For this cause, there is weakness and strength is lacking. Kaya dito po, nung nag Turo po ang ating instructor ni si Panginoong Jesus sa reality, sa situation ng Seventh Adventist Church. Stripping off those defilement beneath. Ano pong nakita? They were pretending to cover their defilement and rottenness of character. Kaya ang nangyari po, the divine presence had departed. At ito pong rason na merong weakness and strength is lacking inside the Seventh Adventist Church. Pero ngayon pa man, ang simbahan pong Adventista ay iniibig ng Panginoon. Ito po'y iglesia na kalugod-lugod sa mga mata ng Panginoon. Kaya nagpadala siya ng appeals and appeals and appeals para mag-repent. Ayon po sa malaman natin at mababasa natin, in the year 1901, there was an appeal from the Lord. Volume 8, Testimonies for the Church, 97 and 98. At the Jar Conference held in Battle Creek in 1901, the Lord gave His people evidence that He was calling for reformation. But God was not honored. The testimonies of His Spirit were not heeded. Men did not separate from the practices that were in decided opposition to the principles of truth 
and righteousness which should ever be maintained in the Lord's work. Kaya po, merong apilo ang Panginoon to have a decided reformation in 1901 Jar Conference Session in Battle Creek. Pero ano po nangyari? Ang Panginoon po was not honored. At ang mga testimonies, ang mga warning, ang mga advices ay hindi po tinatanggap po ng Iglesia. Ang mga tao, lalo na ang mga leaders, did not separate from the practices that were in decided opposition to the principles of truth. Mula Minneapolis hanggang 1901, nandoon pa rin ang espiritu ng opposition sa principles of truth, especially in the principles of truth of Christ or righteousness. Ito po masaklap, kaya hindi rin tinanggap ang apilo ng Panginoon. Three years after, another a uh, time of appeal of the Lord. Appeal of the Lord in 1903. Ano po nangyari dito po? When the Battle Creek Sanitarium was destroyed, Christ gave himself to defend the lives of men and women. In this destruction, God was appealing to his people to return to him. So dito po makikita natin na nang nagkaroon ng apoy at nasunog yung Battle Creek Sanitarium, ang Panginoon ay gumawa ng pamaraan na walang isang kaluluwa na mamatay. At yung building lang po ang nasunog. Ito po ay isang apilo o apil ng Panginoon ng kanyang bayan ay manumbalik sa kanya. Aside from the burning of the sanitarium, Another fire burned the Review and Herald office. At ano pong sinasabi dito? And in the destruction of the Review and Herald office and saving of life, he makes a second appeal to them. So yung dalawang pagkasunog sa sanitarium at saka sa publishing house ay dalawang apilo ng Panginoon na ang bayang Adventista ay manumbalik sa kanya. Pero ano po nangyari? Mababasa natin sa volume 8, Testimonies for the Church 231. After I received word in regard to the excellent meeting of confession and unity that had been held in Battle Creek, I was writing in my diary and was about to record the thankfulness I felt because a change had come. When my hand was arrested and there came to me a word, write it not, no change for the better has taken place. Ito po ang masakit na reality. Merong nakita na emotional or outward uh, repentance and reformation ang nakita ni Sister Elenja White. Pero nung isulat na sana niya ang kanyang kagalakan sa changes po sa mga leaders at sa bayan ng Panginoon, Iglesia Adventista sa panahon na yan in 1903, when she was about to write it in her diary, then it was arrested by an angel at merong salita na naparingan niya, write it not, huwag mo itong isulat kasi walang pagbabago for improvement ang nakita dito. At after that year, three years after again, another appeal of the Lord was given to the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Selected Messages, Book 2, and 401. During the general conference session of 1909, A work should have been done in the hearts of those in attendance that was not done, but though opportunities were given for confession of sin, for heartfelt repentance, and for a decided reformation, thorough work was not done. Anong ibig sabihin dito, mga kaibigan? Totoo nga, my confession of sins, merong ano po, contrition of hearts, 
tinatanggap na nagkamali ang iglesia, nagkamali ang leadership, nagkamali ang mga tao. Pero ano ang nangyari? Thorough work was not done. It's not enough to repent. There must be conversion. There must be revival. And there must be reformation after repentance. Pero it, hindi po ito nagawa. Kaya, in the year 1913, before po si Sister Elenja White namatay, the last call for reformation was given to the church. And it, crea it created a great shaking inside the church. Testimonies to Ministers 514, paragraph 3. Men of clear understanding are needed now. God calls upon those who are willing to be controlled by the Holy Spirit to lead out in a work of thorough reformation. I see a crisis before us, and the Lord calls for His laborers to come into line. Every soul should now stand in a position of deeper, truer consecration to God than during the years that have passed. Dito po, Makikita natin na ang Panginoon ay nanawagan ng special na mga tao na merong klaro na pag-iisip. At sila po ay kinakailangan na tumatayo na dapat sila po ay makontrola ng Holy Spirit to lead out a work of complete reformation. Bakit po? Dahil merong krisis na darating. At ang Panginoon ay nanawagan sa mga tao na may puso sa pag-service sa Kaniya. The Lord is calling for His laborers to come into line. At ano kaya itong crisis na ito? Messages to young people, 89 to 90. The Lord will arise to shake terribly the earth. We shall see troubles on all sides. Thousands of ships will be hurled into the depths of the sea. Navies will go down. And human lives will be sacrificed by millions. Kaya dito ang crisis na darating ay ibig sabihin, ayun po sa kanyang vision ay gira po. May mga barko, na masisira they will go down to the deeps of the sea and thousands of them will be hurled into the deeps of the sea why? because there will be a war and millions of human lives will be sacrificed mga kapatid going back to the history of the beginning of the Advent movement what was the perilous situation of the people who accepted the message of the first angel represented by William Miller? Dito po, mga kapatid, let us make an analogy that when the first angel message was presented from the Methodist, from the Baptist Church, there was a persecution and there was separation. And when the second angel also announces the fall of Babylon, there will be also separation. And when the third angel's message will come in, do you think there will be separation in the third angel's message? We will see. But let us go back to the time of William Miller because in every movement will come. When the first angel uh, came down, what was the effect of the people? Let us see. Great Controversy 376. In all my labors, said Miller, I never had the desire or thought to establish any separate interest from that of existing denominations or to benefit one at the expense of another. I thought to benefit all, supposing that all Christians should rejoice in the prospect of Christ's coming and that those who could not see as I did would not love any less those who should embrace this doctrine. I did not conceive there would be ever be any necessity to separate uh, for a separate meetings. 
Sa pansimula po, ayaw ni William Miller na mag-alis sa mga simbahang bautista. Para sa kanya, lahat ay makikinabang sa mensahe po sa second coming of Christ. It is not necessary to have a separate meetings. Pero ano po nangyari? 376 ng Great Controversy. As his work tended to build up the churches, it was for a time regarded with favor. But as ministers and religious leaders decided against the Advent doctrine and desired to suppress all agitation of the subject, they do not only oppose it from the pulpit, but deny their members the privilege of attending, preaching, upon the second admin. Dito po makikita natin na ang mga simbahan po ay negative, prejudice po sa mensahe sa second coming of Christ. So, they deny their members to attend to the sermons of William Miller. And now, ilan sa mga kapatid na na na, na nanirahan sa loob o umalis po sa labas sa simbahan na ito. Ayon po sa karugtong na paragraph, they loved their churches and were loath to separate from them. Iniibig nila po ang mga simbahan nila. Ayaw nilang umalis. But as they saw the testimony of God's word suppressed and their right to investigate the prophecies denied, they felt that loyalty to God for they forbade them to submit. Kaya nung nakita nila na ang pag-investigate po sa prophecy was denied by their church, ngayon, ano pong gagawin nila? Hindi na po sila pwedeng magbigay ng Bible study sa loob, hindi na makapagbigay ng sermon about si Kan Kaming. Ano bang gawin natin? So the leaders suppress the message. Leadership of those Baptist Church, Methodist Church, did not tolerate the light. So, anong gawin nila? Hence, they, they felt themselves justified in separating from their former connection. In the summer of 1844, about 50,000 withdrew from the churches. Kita natin dito mga kaibigan. Now, when the first angel message came in and started the presentation of their message, ano po nangyari? There was a separation. 50,000 of them withdrew from the churches they loved. Ano po ang mensahe ni Miller? Si William Miller po, po ay nagbibigay ng mensahe about the second coming of Christ. And he was sitting the time that Jesus will come in March 22, 1844. And he was thinking that Daniel 8.14 The, in the understanding of that prophecy is that the earth will be cleansed by fire. So when the earth will be cleansed, then Jesus will come. And using Malachi 4, 1 to 3, that when the Lord will cleanse the earth, it should be cleansed by fire. So with the aid of chronological computation of Jewish calendar, he decided to set the time of the coming of Christ in March of 1844 with the date of March 22. Pero ang nangyari po, that period did not come. So, the second angel come in to help the first angel. Who were those persons responsible for the second angel's message? They were Samuel Snow, Charles Fitz, and Josiah Leach. So, nung hindi po na tupad ang sinasabi ni William Miller na ang pagparito ng Panginoong Jesus ay March 22, 1844, tumulong si Josiah Leach, si Charles Fitz, at saka si Joshua Himes na sila po at Samuel Snow sila po ay tumulong kay William Miller sa pagsaliksik. Bakit po hindi pumarito ang Panginoon? And they found out that it should not be in the summertime. But it should be where? 
in the autumn of 1844. That was seven months from the time. And he started again to preach a very vigorous presentation that Jesus will come in October 22, 1844. Ayon po sa Great Controversy 389, mababasa natin. The second angel's message of Revelation 14 was first preached in the summer of 1844. And it then had a more direct application to the churches of the United States. But again, they were destined to disappointment. The time of expectation passed and their Savior did not appear. 389 and Great Controversy, Sabi, a large class who had professed to believe in the Lord's soon coming renounced their faith. Some who had been very confident were so deeply wounded in their pride that they felt like fleeing from the world like Jonah. They complain of God and choose death rather than life. Kaya dito po, mga kapatid, out of those 50,000 who joined William Miller at the beginning of the first angel's message, majority of them went out and went back to the world. And only a handful of them accepted the message of the third angels of the third angel. Kaya mababasa natin dito po sa early writings 88 and 89. I asked the angel if there were none left. Anong ibig sabihin, there were none left? Kasi almost all who believe about the second coming of Christ went back to the world. And only a handful, ibig sabihin, mabibilang lang ng ating mga kamay, daliri na ating mga kamay, ang nanatili. At nag-investiga, bakit si Jesus ay hindi pumarito? Sabi ni Sister Elenjo White, meron pa bang natira? At ang kagandahan dito, may sinagot ang anghel. And I saw a little company traveling in a narrow pathway, all seem to be firmly united, bound together by the truth in bundles of companies, said the angel. The third angel is binding or sealing them in bundles for the heavenly garner. Sino po itong little company that were left after the disappointment in 1844? This little company seen by Ellen G. White in vision was the Seventh-day Adventist Church in its beginning stage. As time passed by, it became a huge denomination around the world. Ang tanong po, meron ba kayang separation from the Seventh-day Adventist Church when that other angel will come? Tinanggap ba kaya ng Seventh-day Adventist Church ang mensahe of that other angel? As it was in the past, sa first, second angel, merong separation. Mangyari po dito sa third angel nung bumaba ang that other angel. There will be also separation. Let us remember that the message would be brought again because in 1888, it was not accepted by the leaders and majority of the people. No one could stop the message from coming to God's people. The following statements from the Spirit of Prophecy make it clear. Let us read. Testimonies to Ministers 107. Even if all our leading men should refuse light and truth, that door will still remain open. The Lord will raise up men who will give the people the message for this time. Kaya, bilang conclusion, mga kaibigan, sa study na ito, segment ng part 2 of that other angel ay ganito. Merong separation in the time of the first angel. Merong separation in the time of the coming of the second angel. At dito po sa pangatlong anghel, meron ba kayang separation when that other angel will come? At nalaman natin na there was no complete 
reception of the message of that other angel since 1888. Meron ba kayang separation so that there will be a people that will be purified to proclaim the loud cry? Ito po'y malalaman natin sa susunod na kabanata, part 3 of that other angel in Revelation 18. This is my wish and prayer that the Lord will bless you. Please expect and wait for the other presentation of that other angel, part 3. May the Lord bless you. Amen.